for example, you know, Griffin, when I watched their ADK, ADK Viper play Vladimir, like, his combos are just perfect every single time, whereas NA, you know, you got Alltech flashing in with Zanyas, it's like, okay. I mean, we have a lot of stuff like that, and I think if, I don't really know how to fix that, I think just NA as a whole is a bit weaker mechanically than the other regions. Hey guys, Parks Alza here with the Shot Caller, joined by Stixe in the bot lane for Counter Logic Gaming. You guys just got a 2-0 this week. Mm -hmm. You're looking good. How's the team doing? How's the morale? Um, I think the team morale right now is pretty good. Um, I would say that this week our practice wasn't great. And yeah, I think we have a lot to work on for next week. But the last like two days, it just something kind of clicked with us. And we just started just like smashing every team in scrim. And then now we're doing pretty well on stage. So. I'm pretty happy about that, and I'm really glad that, you know, we could turn like a situation that didn't look great into like a, oh wow, we're, we two would this week, which you know none of us were expecting, by just how this week went in practice. But um, yeah, I think we have a lot to work on uh, going to next week, and I think we can do that. So, I feel like I hear that a decent amount mm -hmm. that teams will say, man, we really suck this week, and then they they either <laughs> get a two zero or they get a one one, and yeah. and the, both games are convincing. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going on there with that? Uh, well, us, for example, I think we just have a lot of uh, really bad like tendencies in scrims that we don't do on stage. So for us, it's kind of hard to get practice, uh, great practice, because we're doing so many of these like, you know, things that we normally don't do. I would say just the fundamentals of things that we're doing. We mess up fundamentals in, in practice, but when we go on stage, we don't mess those things up. So yeah, it's, it's just kind of weird, and I think it definitely is not good for practice. So yeah, that's the thing we're trying to work on the most. So maybe once you get the practice down, hopefully, you know, you continue yeah, yeah. to do well on stage. Because, yeah, you don't want to have bad practice and only good stage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how it was for us last split. It's like we had pretty good practice. And then, like, every time we went on stage, it's like, oh, my God, we're making so many mistakes. But this play is the reverse. But, again, like, you know, I don't want to lose every single scrim. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you mentioned something seemed like it just kind of clicked a couple days mm -hmm. ago. Do you feel like that's clicked for sure or just kind of momentarily? I mean, it's hard to really know. I think with league teams in general, you know, anything can turn on and turn off at any moment. So that's why you can never really take it for granted that, oh, you know, my team's doing well now, but you can't, you can never just be like, yeah, we're just, we tilled this week. We're the best team, right? It's like, no, no, we still have so much we have to work on. And we have to make sure that it doesn't slip at all because if it slips, we're going to for sure OT next weekend. So yeah, I think it's just really important that our practice is improved a lot and uh, yeah, it will be good. So stay clean, stay focused. Yeah. And you took down Echo Fox, mm -hmm. who coming into the split or coming into this week, I guess before Rift Rivals mm -hmm. up until week three looked very, very good mm -hmm. with some crazy drafts and stuff like that. Yeah. They haven't looked as good since then. Um, any thoughts, like what were, what were your kind of general thoughts and understandings of them as a team before going into that game yesterday? So Echo Fox is just a team that likes to fight every single objective. And so it's like, you can never, assume that like oh we don't see them you know this this baron or this dragon is free they're always going to just pop up out of nowhere and just fight you so you always have to be ready to fight echo fox and i think they're a team that they were playing a lot of funnel and so that means they didn't practice a lot of standard and so i think when they went to rift rivals i would definitely say that you know EU is a bit ahead of na in terms of the meta i think in terms of standard play NA is better but yeah Eva is just ahead of the meta and so you know echo fox looked a lot worse at rift rivals but you know i still don't think they're a bad team i think they even won versus tsm today so yeah, I don't know. I think they're they're still a really good team. They have a very like brawly kind of play style, and it's it's definitely not easy to play against because they're always like keeping on your toes. So. And you had a lot. You started uh, Vamp Scepter, and you were buying a ton of pots yesterday in mm -hmm. lane. Was how scary was that going against uh, their bot duo because they had the Heimer, and <laughs> yeah, it just, everyone you know the casters were talking about it like, man, he keeps buying all these pots. He's yeah. running through them. And then you ended up like, I don't know, un undead or something. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you just popped off <laughs> later on in the game. So what was that like? How did you how did you stay alive in lane the whole time? Yeah, so I think uh, Heimer Fiddle is a, just a combo that's really known for being very passive. It's going to take your tower super fast. So you, know, you need to help bottom lane or do something to relieve the pressure on bottom lane. But I think uh, me and Bifrost figured out you know champion picks that are good into Fiddleheimer and we're able to just kind of play conservatively and just not just don't take trades you know just farm and then we actually ended up being up in CS because I was just last hitting perfectly and then I mean uh, Heimerdinger in general doesn't always last hit perfectly because his turrets will mess up the farm so I ended up being farm being up in farm and then um, after six I would say Heimer Fiddle is really hard to hit the turret if they have the enemy ball and has CC and I also don't think they played the lane that well but yeah it's, that's another story but yeah, for sure. Maybe if it had been 
so as or someone down there, it would have been a little bit more difficult. Yeah, from, from my experience, playing versus like North American players playing Heimer and Fiddle, it's not that pressuring, and I don't I don't feel the same pressure when I you know I watch Rift Rebels and stuff. I'm like, wow, this Heimer is insane. It's just like it's like I mean it's okay. It's, I'm just getting pushed in, but it doesn't really do much outside of that. And then um, I think maybe if teams play better, it might be better. But so far, it's working for us to just play against it. So, and unfortunately, Jat gave us all a very good uh, pro tip on all the <laughs> Heimer combos yesterday. Yeah. So we may see some better Heimers next week. I actually went in a game last night and was like, oh, I didn't realize you could do this. Yeah. And I got one of the like uh, E laser things right. off. Yeah, it felt no, I, really good. I, I think that's most like bot lane players right now too. They go into the game and they're like, oh. That's that's what I can do. Yeah. Like same with Vladenheimer. It's like the same thing. I was I was even laughing. There was like a, they were showing how to play Vlad combo, and I almost made like a really toxic tweet. Where I was like, you should probably like <laughs> show this to all the fucking like bot lane players in NA. Cause, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, our Vlad has left a little bit to be desired. Yeah. Um. All right. So going into the rest of the split, you guys are looking better now. You're talking about you know some things are hopefully clicking. What is the next thing that you're looking to work on to be sure that this stays together for you guys as a team? Yeah, so I think for us, um, we just have to do a lot of like Vaudeville and stuff. I think that helped a lot. Uh, we kind of took other concepts that other teams were using, uh, like LCK teams, for example. We're you know using concepts that, they're, concepts that they're using to implement our own gameplay, and I think that helped a lot. And yes, yeah, so I think if we just keep doing uh, you know really good review and understand, I think we in general just understand the game like really well right now. So I think if we just keep that up and you know keep our fundamentals strong, we'll be really good. Yeah, borrowing from LCK yeah. doesn't seem like a bad idea. It's a, it's a rental. <laughs> and did you get to practice against any of the teams at Rift Rivals? Uh, yeah, we played versus Fnatic at Rift Rivals in scrims. That was that was pretty fun. They're like insanely aggressive, and we were like, because I would say NA is as a region is very conservative, and I would say NA is like pretty much a weaker version of LCK, whereas EU is like a weaker version of LPL. Because they're just super brawly and just like super insane, like they're they're always just fighting. So when yeah when we scrim them, we, I mean we just got smashed. Like we don't know what to do against that, right? But yeah, I think when it goes back to playing versus any teams, it, it feels a lot better again because they're not playing so aggressive and they're playing more calculated and things like that. So, any thoughts on how we can be the less bad version of the LCK <laughs> and maybe you know even EU could be the less bad version right, right. of the LPL? Uh, I think there's just a lot of like individual mistakes that the players from EUNNA make that uh, like LCK and LPL players probably would make. And I think those like small individual mistakes do add up. So I would say that's like a big part of it. Uh, yeah, I, when I see LCK players, for example, you know, Griffin, when I watch their ADK, ADK Viper play Vladimir, like his combos are just perfect every single time. Whereas NA, you know, you got Alltech flashing in with Zanyas. It's like, okay. I mean, we have a lot of stuff like that. And I think if, I, I don't really know how to fix that. I think just NA as a whole is a bit weaker mechanically than the other regions, but yeah, I mean, we just have to practice already, I guess. To bring it back, is that because of the ping or? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't want to blame it on the ping. I think that the North American solo queue environment is so awful. I, I don't like it at all. I don't want to play it. But I mean, you have to, because that's what you have to do to get mechanical practice and stuff like that. But I mean, I think I think a big reason is, um, I think a big thing will help as if pros can you know set up like this TR thing that everyone's talking about, where pros can just scrim each, or play solo queue versus each other on the tournament realm and stuff like that. I think that will help a lot in, instead of playing, you know, versus lucky players who are, you know, like half asleep. So, yeah. I'm curious too. Would it how, how helpful would it be if, let's say, Riot opened up the practice tool for organizations or mm -hmm. something, and you could load in a whole team and just mm -hmm. like practice one thing, just oh, like spawn Elder Drake, everyone get full build, <laughs> and or like this team gets full build yeah, and yeah. this team gets you know close. Like let's say they're from behind, but mm -hmm. they have a better comp or whatever. Is that something that you think would be really beneficial, or do you think teams would even use that? Yeah, I think teams 100% use that. I think that's a pretty good tool. That's also something I have thought about, or is like, oh, you know, why, why is there only one person allowed in practice tool? It's like one person and a bot. You can never have like two people to practice like certain combos. And I, w I really wish you could have like, I mean, there's so many like champion interactions I want to practice, but you know, so I don't want to go into a game and AFK to level six in, in a custom game like that. It's I think it would be so much easier if we could just have multiple people in the practice tool. And yeah, I think like you said, it could be really good for scenarios like that and practicing this. Hmm, maybe, uh, maybe we'll implement that. Not we, I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I have no power there. Um, cool, that'd be fun. And yeah, one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, with Zoe, since you're, you're, you do more damage with Q, mm -hmm. what if you like, you know, ult backwards, throw your Q, 
and then you click on a thresh lantern and you fly forward <laughs> to a rise teleport oh, that God. takes you even far like you know yeah, yeah. no i do think of like that in practice all the time where i'll just like throw zoe q and then i'll teleport across the map and it goes flying across <laughs> I, I just love doing random stuff like that so i mean I, I do a lot of like random champion reactions like that all the time so yeah awesome well that would be that would be cool i would like to see that yeah. i think you know, maybe that would be something that could bring us up to speed a little bit more. Obviously, they yeah. would have to have access to it as well, right, right. but they don't even need it. They're already there. Right, right. We yeah, just have to play catch that, up. That would definitely help, though. I agree. So, Well, do that. Make that happen. Um, otherwise, do you have any thoughts on the AD carry meta? It seems like, or I feel like I've seen a little bit less funnel strat mm -hmm. this week compared to week three. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't looked at the numbers, so I might just be like biased because Rift Rivals had so much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, any thoughts on how the meta is shifting and how we are adapting after that tournament? Yeah, so I think uh, we did adapt pretty well. I think everyone realized, you know, EU is definitely ahead of the meta because they're playing these, these champions that we're just like, okay, we don't really know what to pick into this. We don't know how to play against it, things like that. And so, yeah, I think we were behind the meta and now we're picking it up slowly. Um, and then, I forgot the first part of the question, actually. That's fine. Um, just like our, I don't, I don't feel like we've seen as much Oh, funnel. Hard right, funnel, right. yeah. Right, yeah. So funnel is a strat that people were practicing a ton, and it was really powerful, and it was really annoying to play against because it's like, okay, I mean, this guy just farms, he farms, he farms, and then he's unkillable, and he one-shots everyone. What do we do? And then people started slowly figuring out, okay, there's counters to the strategy, there's champion picks you can counter the strategy with, and then slowly people were like, okay, I feel like standard comps are just better than funnel. And then people just started going back to standard because I think it's also really hard to review um, you know, games when it's like your AD carries mid, your mid laner's bot. It's like your mid laner's bot, he has no idea how to play bot lane, your AD carries mid, he doesn't know how to get control in mid lane and things like that. It's like, how, how do you review that game and get a lot of productivity out of it? So yeah, I prefer, you know, standard lanes and things like that. But I think also other teams were realizing, okay, you know, this is a bit hard to do, so. Do you think if the meta continues to, you know, standardize a little bit, but also, you know, with, with little patches that come in and balance updates, if we get to a point where we can kind of see anything, you know, maybe mages are viable mm -hmm. and AD carries are viable, but, mm -hmm. And you can either go tank or carry top right. or tank or carry jungle, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think we could get to a point where we actually go back to the lane swap? Because it's like, oh, I picked a viable lane, but then they picked another viable lane that's right. actually a direct counter. Do you think we could get right, back right. to the lane swap meta? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's coming. Um, I mean, LPL has already done it. So it's definitely a viable strategy. And I think a lot of teams, you know, if we would just lane swap right now, people will be like, oh my God, what do we do? So. <laughs> Yeah, I think lane swap will for sure come back because there's a lot of bot lanes right now. I think people in general are just starting to pick up bot lanes that are just, there's no counter. For example, you know, Shen, Shen, Alistar kill lanes like that. It's just, there's just, I mean, if you get taunted or comboed, you're, you will die. There, there's nothing you can do about it. So I think people will start lane swapping if the lane is like unplayable like that. So I think it'll, it'll come back. That'd be pretty interesting to watch unfold. Probably boring for the viewers. I'm sorry, but... I actually like it. I really like the mind games of the lane swap, especially like two or three weeks after it first came out right. because it went from, it was like, okay, I'm going to purposefully pick a bad lane mm -hmm. and then maybe I'll swap it or maybe not, but they have to get crazy deep vision. Maybe we'll just camp in the jungle yeah. and you get a lot of mind games, which is fun to watch. Yeah. I think also, uh, you know, if lane swap does happen, I think it would also kind of weed out like the teams that are like super good because I, I for example, teams with like I would say, you know, TL 100 Thieves, like, they have those guys who played in the lane swap meta before, and also, like, CLG, we're, like, a super old team where we played in the lane swap meta, and we exceeded, like, very well in it. So it's, like, you know, if these teams, compared to, you know, like, I, I don't know about Optic and, like, Flyquest and stuff like that, I don't know how they're going to adapt to a funnel, or, sorry, a lane swap meta, whereas, like, the, I would say the old guard teams are going to adapt a lot better, so. Interesting, interesting. Well, I look forward to, to <laughs> seeing, you know, if it develops, and, and if so, how. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned Optic. Have you gotten to spend much time with your brother, <laughs> Power of Evil, in the mid lane there? It was it was pretty funny. I was talking to my mom outside uh, after my game yesterday, and you know Optic was walking by, and she kind of pulled him aside and said, "Hey, I want to get a picture with my two sons." And I was <laughs> like, "Oh my god, this is awkward." But yeah, it, it was funny. He's a really nice guy. He always wishes me good luck. So, wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it was it was super funny to see that on on Twitter. <laughs> my mom's a big memer, so. Yeah, I saw the. She said trolling in AD carry. Yeah. In her bio. Yeah, I don't know. She just. She just trolls me all day. Well, that's super fun. Um, my mom doesn't even know what troll means, so. I hope you're not watching this, I'm sorry. Um, awesome, well thank you so much. Yep. Let's play rock, paper, scissors, and all then we'll right. get out of here. Let's get it. Awesome. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors. scissors. Uh, I'm, cut in half. I'm 
Always losing these days. All right. Thank you so much. Best of luck going forward. Good luck keeping together as a team. And we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching that video. To find more, you can click some off to the side. We're certainly glad to have you. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. We really appreciate that. And comment below. I love the feedback. You know, whether it's good or bad, I like to hear what you guys are thinking. Thank you so much for your part in that. We'll catch you next time.